you may have come across the term class activation maps or CAMs. In explainable AI research, they have come to refer to a collection of methods that produce heat maps or saliency maps. These show the most important pixels or regions in an image that a model has used to make a classification. However, the original CAM was designed to explain a specific type of convolutional neural network. That is one with a global average pooling layer. Hi, I'm Connor and welcome to Edio. In the previous video, we looked at the theory behind CAMs. We saw how the weights from a GAP layer could be used to explain the network itself. To gain a deeper understanding, in this video, we're going to apply CAMs from scratch using Python and PyTorch hooks. But really, the point is to give you both the theoretical and practical knowledge of how to apply any similar CAM approaches like GradCAM. Before we get started, I'd like to mention that this lesson is part of a wider explainable AI course for computer vision. It's completely free and you can find a link to it in the description. You'll find the article version for this lesson as well as many coding resources. There's also a paid version of the course which I'll talk about at the end of this video. Okay, so we are working in the CAM notebook in the design folder. And yeah, we're gonna start with our imports, kind of have some standard Python imports. Um, we have the hugging face import because we're going to be loading our model directly from hugging face. And we also have some kind of additional uh, functions to, to help work with that model. Um, we have the image data set class imported from the, the data sets Python file and the CNN with the GAP layer from the networks Python file. And these are just the, the data set classes and the, the architecture classes used to train the model. Okay, so I'm gonna run those imports. Then we're going to load our model from hugging face. So you can see we kind of initialize our architecture we're going to load the pot plant classifier and specifically we're going to use the, the GAP version of that model. Yeah, we move it to a GPU and set it to evaluation mode. So you can see the model summary and this is the same model summary as the, the, the model that we saw in the theory section. And yeah, it essentially has three convolutional layers followed by this uh, global average pooling layer and fully connected layer. So you can see this last convolutional layer has 64 feature maps and we're going to use those along with the weights from the fully connected layer to create our CAMs. And we've spoken about it before, but this model is trained on the pot plant data set. It's an image classification data set where we aim to predict the names of four different pot plants. We use this data set to create the grab cam heat map. So take a look at that lesson if you want a little bit more insight. So we are going to load the test set from this pot plant data set. We also have the, the kind of names for each of our pot plants, uh, Rudo, Bayer, Greg, and Yuki. And we, pass the paths from the, the test set and the number of classes, which will be four, to create a data set object using our image data set class. Okay, then we're just going to select one of the items or one of the instances from this, from this data set. And yeah, we're gonna do a little bit of formatting in terms of uh, the input image and the target variable and the prediction. And you can see the, the output here where we have a, yeah, it's a picture of Rudo, but the, the model is predicting it as a picture of Bayer. Okay, so we're going to create a cam 
to help explain why the model is making this prediction. To start, we're going to select the fully connected layer from, um, from the model. And this is the, the linear part of the fully connected layer, not the, the dropout. Then we're going to select the, the weights and we're only going to select the weights for class one, which if you remember is our predicted class. And yeah, when we output the shape, you can see we have 64 values and there's going to be one value for each of the feature maps in that final convolutional layer. If you remember back to the model summary, we saw there were 64 feature maps. As a reminder, these weights are a parameter of the model and they're not going to change depending on uh, the instance that we use. And so we can obtain the weights before we do a forward pass. This is not true for the feature maps. We must populate the elements uh, using a forward pass with the instance that we want to explain. So to do that, we're going to start by selecting the final convolutional layer of the model. We're then going to register this hook function onto this final convolutional layer. And what this hook function does is it's going to append the output of this layer to the feature maps list. Essentially the output is, yeah, it's just the, it is the feature maps. Then we do a forward pass. This will do a forward pass with our input image. The, the hook function will be activated and the output from this layer will, will be saved. We then remove the hook. And yeah, you see when we run it, um, you can see that the shapes of this, this feature maps list is we have a, a batch size of one. We have 64 feature maps. And each of those feature maps is 256 by 256 pixels. Okay, so the next step is we kind of want to take this weighted sum of all of these feature maps. So we start by formatting the feature maps and the, the GAP weights that we selected earlier. And essentially what we're doing here is we're just detaching it from the computational graph so we don't kind of mess with the with that graph when we do this calculation. We uh, start with a, a initialized cam, which has the same dimensions as the feature maps, but every value is just zero. And then, yeah, we just iterate um, over each of the 64 feature maps. And each time we are adding the feature map times the weight to our cam. And that gives us our weighted sum. Then there's just a, a few more steps. Uh, after that is we apply the relu activation function to, to this cam so that we only have positive values. And then we normalize it between a value of zero and one. And finally, we can output it. And yeah, you can see this clearly uh, important region and it looks like the pot is quite important to this prediction. If we wanted to, we could plot a clearer visualization of the heat map using some of the functions that we discussed in the grad cam lesson. And yeah, just to end, uh, we kind of have this generate cam function, which just essentially combines everything that we, we spoke about before. So hopefully that process was clear. As I mentioned, this was more to give you kind of the, the practical code for creating cams using really any method. And the difference comes in what weight we use to calculate that weighted feature map. Um, in this case, we use the, the global average pooling weights. For grad cam, you use the gradients with respect to the, the target logit. And yeah, but kind of the, the underlying process will be very similar to create to creating grad cam heat maps. As I mentioned, 
This video is part of a larger course where I go into detail on explainable AI methods for computer vision. This includes methods like occlusion, SHAP, GradCam, guided back propagation, deep lift, and integrated gradients. You can access all of the course content for free, but there's also a paid version of the course. With that, you'll get access to a certificate for the course, quizzes, all of the videos ad-free, and an ebook, which will allow you to access all of the course content offline.